I sometimes like to go to the pool at the university and watch the para swimmers. Especially Anna, who was once like me, a girl who was told early on all the things she wouldn't be able to do. And then I came to Free to Be Me. And like Anna did 10 years ago, I just got there's no limit to all the things that I can do. And my story is just beginning. You come here and people with disabilities, you feel normal. You feel like you're not ashamed to be who you are. I mean, that's in the, it's in the name, free to be me. They're really free to be themselves when they come here and we welcome that, we love it. And no matter uh, what their impairment, whatever their disability may be, they're welcome here. A lot of their childhood is just taken up by therapies and you know, physio or occupational therapy or speech therapy, which is great, but it doesn't leave much time to just play and be a kid. I can tell you about day one when we first came here because it was when Free to Be Me was over in the Butter Dome big building that he'd never seen before and we had to do some talking about wa even walking in the doors. Yeah, it was a little intimidating. We weren't, weren't too sure what to expect. Jenny, you were just little. It, it was nervous, but in a way that I can't really explain. In my, my head, I thought it would have like a glass and I'll just be in this tiny room running around. <laughs> thinking that, you know, this is going to be another place where we're going to, you know, poke and prod and do assessments and do things that aren't fun. When we came here for the first day, not knowing what to expect, that's probably what he thought it was going to be like. It's not too many times that these kids get to just be kids and have fun and not be seen first and foremost by their diagnosis. Everybody seemed really positive, super happy. There was no yelling or screaming. It was all like laughing and conversations happening. So. That totally put me at ease. I remember the first class, he was off. I was the parent that was just standing there the whole time. As the class went on, I just moved further and further and further away. And then here, I think they realized they're in a supportive environment where we can deal with any behavior or any outcome of any activity, and we're okay with it. And the first day came and went, and Michaela was awesome. It's like, wow, she could do those things. I didn't know she could do those things. I knew this was going to be good for Nikki. And then the first day he met Kennedy, it was just instant. And seeing Nicholas's reaction and like pointing out all these toys and all these this equipment that I never even gave a second thought to, I was like, yeah, we have this. This is awesome. Yeah, Nicholas's excitement, I guess, being in the environment made me really excited too. Zany, crazy, lots of noise, activity, but lots of laughter. How's it going? Glad to see you. Let's go have some fun. With Spencer, it's like anything. He's going to operate at a certain level and look like he's never going to get out of there. But we really, really, really wanted him to be able to bike on his own and for us to just get to that point where we could all just bike. It just looked like it was never going to come for him. He was satisfied having somebody hold his seat as he moved around the gym. He had to do a couple of rounds of cycle challenge to, to make that transition to fully biking. And then, I don't know, it just all of a sudden clicked. His volunteer held on to the back of that bike and ran for like an hour every evening <laughs> with him. I just remember him chasing Spencer around for an hour and thinking, oh, I feel so sorry for him, but I'm so happy. There has been no moment that I can think of in, the, in Spencer's nine years of life, other than the day he was born, that stirred that level of emotion in me. It was unbelievable, like I was crying. I'm breaking up a little bit now thinking about it. Like Spencer, Nicholas was also someone who really wanted to learn how to ride his bike. However, being in the community and around his peers in the neighborhood, it was just not working for him. I fell a bunch of times and the only, the only time when I r rode my bike was with the training wheels. He didn't even want to get on the bike anymore at home. The second day, I think, with Kennedy, she just brought out a bike and she's like, well, let's just try this. And it was really casual, it wasn't scary at all, and he, he got on it, and I was really surprised. We practiced a lot by like looking up and pedaling really fast. Wanted to try it again the next time and the next time. Maybe Jesse's little stats at the Stetford Center, maybe those little free to be me games we're playing give them those skills that they can achieve stuff they never thought they could. Since I know how to ride a bike soon I would probably get my own bike and I would be able to ride to school. 
the positivity and the constant encouragement, he feels like he's succeeding, and he is, because he, he's, he's moving at his own pace.